hurts in my arms. Okay. The sun's going to get in weird spots. I need to put shades up in here. There's no shades in this room. Hi, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And today I'm logging into my computer and I'm talking to you about ding, 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 dahlias. So this is the 2021 version of I Dream of Dahlias. I posted a video last year, maybe around this time. Today's video is all about the dahlias that I plan on growing in 2020. And it was my visions of my dahlia field for 2020. And those visions came crumbling down. It was a disaster. It was the year of dahlia disappointment. And uh, let's talk about that quickly. In spring of 2020, I planted roughly 575 tubers, and some of those were clumps, into the ground. The investment that I had was about $800, and I ended up only harvesting a couple of dozen stems. No joke. 575 plants a couple dozen stems. Now, some of these plants actually only grew eight to 12 inches tall. What? These are 36 to 40 inch plants and they were only growing eight to 12 inches out of the ground. In some cases, the grass was growing taller than them in the surrounding areas. It was absolutely crazy to me. I had never experienced this with dahlias before. I've successfully grown them in the past. In fact, in 2019, my crop was so big, I expanded from about 30 tubers to 575 because it was just so fantastic. So there were a few reasons why my dahlias were just duds this year. Init oh. <laughs> it's sparkling water. Initially, I suspected that the dahlias were were suffering from the drought. We had a five to six week drought in early spring. It was a little colder than usual as well. It was warm when we put them into the ground in mid-May, but then we had a little bit of a colder end of the May, early June. I think there were actually snow flurries on like June 2nd or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but... So I thought, okay, they're stunted from a cold late spring and they're also stunted from the drought because I didn't have an irrigation system in place. So I that was what I thought it was. And then it turns out I started to dig these dahlias up at the end of the season because I'm in 4B and I can't keep them in the ground. They're, they're gonna die in the freeze. So I started to pull them up to store them and every other tuber was covered in disease. They either had crown gall, which looks like cauliflower, uh, leafy gall, which looks like a whole bunch of growth nodes coming out at the same exact spot. And then, uh, or they had rot. So they didn't look like they had gall or anything, but when I would cut and split a tuber, within 30 seconds, the flesh of that tuber, which normally looks like a potato, would turn black. So that was like, what? I thought they were fine. And I go to, to split them up and they're turning black on me immediately. It was absolutely insane. And I actually leaned on the Dahlia Growers group on Facebook for answering some of my questions in there. There's someone named Connie in there who's a wealth of information. She's amazing. So she told me what that was. It was some sort of rot and that it was likely too late to save the tuber because it had gotten into the meat of the tuber. If it's sometimes in the neck of the tuber, um, it, it, you might be able to save the rest of it if you cut it off at the top, but uh, this was too far down into the tuber to save. So that was a bummer. I just got so um, disheartened and depressed and I'm pulling them out of the ground and it's uh, the dead, diseased, disheveled, horrible. It was very defeating. So I drowned my sorrows in 75 cups of decaffeinated coffee. Half calf actually. <laughs> and I debated, do I even try dahlias again? I invested $800 and I saw nothing in return, maybe 20 bucks off of a dozen stems because I kept some for my own. I kept some because they're so pretty. The ones that did make it were gorgeous and I really was excited about that. A lot of people asked me about the organza bags that I put on my dahlia heads. That was to keep the bugs from eating the petals, so that's what that's for. So I'm debating, do I try dahlias again? My 2019 season, I had blooms coming out the wazoo, 2020. I can't even fill a bucket. I couldn't even believe it. The answer was laid before me in the form of a video. I think it was a video on Florette's Instagram announcing that for every early copy of Discovering Dahlias that was sold, like the early pre-orders, she was going to be giving away a bag of seeds of dahlia seeds and it showed her inside of one of her outhouse buildings uh, looking at all of the dahlia seeds that were drying on on sheets or something like that and she said okay so if you pre-order discovering dahlias i'm going to send you a packet of dahlia seeds wait 
oh yeah, dahlias can also grow from seeds. So I started researching that and it turns out you can just grow dahlias from seeds. Now they're not going to be a specific variety or species or whatever you want. It's not going to be a specific variety of dahlias. It's going to be a random color and it might be a single, it might be a semi-double, it might be a double. Um, it's kind of like a surprise and I love that. <laughs> so I said, what the heck? Why not grow all of my dahlias from seeds this year and see what happens? And then I started to remember this and then this. And I realized, you know, I, there are some varieties that I really, really want. Like I can't live without. So I'm, I'm going to be ordering fewer tubers, but I'm still going to be ordering tubers in addition to the seeds that I purchased. So let's talk about it. So I do have about 100 tubers in storage in the basement. Um, I don't know if they're going to make it. We'll see. So I'm not gonna talk about those ones. Those will be, you know, like a happy surprise if they don't die in my basement. So I'm not gonna talk about last year's dahlias. I'm gonna talk about the new ones that I'm ordering for this year and I'm starting with the seeds. So I have three seed mixes coming to us. The first one that I ordered is Johnny's. Johnny's is offering a 500 packet of mixed dahlia seeds. Now this is called a Giants Hybrid Mix and they are tall long stems there are singles semi doubles and I think there's another what's it called oh and double and they're three to five inch blooms so Johnny's describes this mix including solid and bicolor blooms in shades of salmon coral white light yellow red and lavender now they also like to point out that double blooms in these varieties produ produced from seeds are generally not as full as the doubles that you would get from a tuber. So just keep that in mind. You're not gonna get those true doubles when you're growing from seed. So this is a 500 seed packet from Johnny's and the cost of this packet was $6. So I also bought a seed packet from Baker Creek. Baker Creek actually had to shut down their website earlier this week because they were getting so many orders that they had to say, all right, we're cutting off orders for 48 hours, I think it was, just so they could catch up and see what they had left in inventory. And then I think they opened back up on Thursday. So that was scary. I mean, this is what we're seeing. I know Geo's got a four to six week backup still on seed orders. So it's, it's kind of crazy the way things are going this year as far as seeds, tubers, bulbs, all of those things. There's just so many people wanting to get their hands on them that people and companies are, are just running out. So the Baker Creek is called an unwins mix. Unwin, not a winner. Hopefully it's a winner for me. All right, so this is, is it's a combo of rose, orange, yellow, purple, and brick red flowers. They're single and semi doubles. And this packet had 50 seeds and the cost of this was $2.75. And I'm also getting that surprise seed packet from Florette when my book arrives, I think March. I think March the book is released, so I, th I think it comes with the book. I don't know exactly how it comes, but I'm getting that packet from Florette. And she also said she wasn't sure, I don't think, how many seeds she was gonna be giving away to each. I think it depended on the number of early uh, pre-orders that she got. So that's gonna be exciting. No idea, gonna try it out. So seeds, if you put them in the ground, will actually grow tubers. So if you end up liking the variety that you get from that seed dahlia, you can save that tuber and that tuber will represent, that's the mother plant. So if you like it, you can keep it. Okay. So now on to the tubers. Now I actually ordered tubers from several different places. I discovered a wholesale company in New Jersey called Longfield Gardens, and you do not have to be a business in order to order from them. They have a public website. You can order right online. You don't have to enter you know, a, a tax ID number or anything like that. They do have really good prices. I think I ended up paying around $3 for a tuber, and it looks, according to their website, that they're actually tuber clumps. So they're not individual tubers, they're tuber clumps. We'll have to confirm that when they come in the mail, but that's the photo that they're showing me online is a tuber clump. So 
fingers crossed that, that 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 is the case because then I can even split them up when they come in. So the first variety I want to talk about is fantastic. It's called the Sugar Plum Mix. There are nine tubers in this mix. There are three of each. Here is the photo that they show online, but they don't tell you the exact varieties on their website. So I put an email into the company and within 24 hours, they got back to me and they told me the exact varieties that are, that are in this mix. So the first variety is called Motto. The second variety is La Baron. And then the third variety in this mix is Kis Verkade, V-E-R-K-A-D-E. -E. I'll put this in the description below because I don't know how to pronounce some of these things. They're a little complicated, but it says Kis Verkade. Verkade, like Versace, Verkade. I don't even know. So three of each of these, and I love how they put these together. In photos, they put them, they sell them as a group and they put them in the picture as a group. They complement each other so well. This is going to be perfect for fall. Next, we have something that I'm really excited about. Now, I do have some inquiries from some local brides looking to purchase their flowers from me. I am not a florist. I am not qualified and nor will I take on bridal clients when it comes to arranging their bouquets or their centerpieces, centerpieces, but I am more than willing to sell buckets of blooms to those brides where they can, you know, organize them themselves or put them together for a bouquet or hire somebody else professionally to organize their bouquets and put them together. But all of the brides that have reached out to me saying they're interested have been telling me that their colors are sunflower yellow and burgundy. So I ordered this very beautiful burgundy mix and I'm so excited about it. I love the different textures that are in this. Yes! I love having darker colors of dahlias because for me they really pop in the fall around here and I do have those requests for weddings and if I don't, guess what? Everybody else gets to enjoy these. So included in this mix is the Karma Chocolate. It's called like C-H-O-C -C, like chalk. Karma Chalk. Arabian Night and tamburo yummy i love these so much and again this is nine tubers in this mix that you buy and it was three of each of or no i yes 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 that's it three of each of these colors come in this mix super excited about these okay so the next one it's a group of 12 tubers four of each no three of each there are four varieties there are three tubers <sighs> guys it's a Flirty Fleurs collection. Okay, so Longfield Garden has teamed up with Flirty Fleurs to make these collections. And this one is called Lucerne. It's the Lucerne collection. Look how elegant and fantastic and romantic this is. It's like looking at a dream. I love how they put these together in photos so you can see all of them together. I'm a sucker for a white dahlia. Now I do have to say the bugs were most attracted to my white dahlias this year. You know, the ones that actually grew, like the snowstorm and the breakout. And I did have a couple of labyrinths. You know, those lighter color, those lighter ones. They just had more bug damage. They just are attracted to them for some reason. Okay, so what's in this mix? We have Petra's Wedding, we have Florel, White Onesta, and then a dahlia called Suki Yori no Shisha. Shisha. It's Shisha. Yes, yeah, so there's an SH. Suki Yori no Shisha. Yes, those are the varieties that are in that glorious mix. Again, three tubers of each of this variety. So that's my order from Longfield. I'm really excited. I have not ordered from this company before, but my flower friend Gina has and she said they were good. So I'm excited about those. All right, what was next? So next I ordered from a wholesale company called Leo. This is my first time ordering from Leo, but I do have several friends who have ordered from Leo before and said their, their quality is up there. So now Leo is a company that you need to have a business license in order to purchase from. You need to apply to become a customer. You have to fill out all your business information and they got back to me in less than 10 hours maybe. I think I applied late afternoon and the next morning I was approved. So you, and you can order right online. So I was able to order four different varieties from them. These are sold in groups of 25. So for the following four varieties, I got 25 clumps of each variety. Now one is one that, one is one, one is one. <laughs> one is a variety that I had grown this past year and I, I had a lot of gall, a lot of crown gall. I think I have some in the basement, but I loved it so much that I didn't wanna risk them not surviving. And this one is Breakout. Breakout 
was so gorgeous to me. I got lost in the petals of this flower. Now these, I think I only harvested three of these breakout flowers, but the ones that I harvested were so scrumptious. I love them so much. Okay, these plants were spectacular. I really adore the softness and the romantic vibes that give that this gives off. So I am all in with breakout. Okay, so next is the Cornell Bronze. Yay! I've been dying for a, a light rust orange dahlia, and I think this is it. And I love ball dahlias. I love to touch them. I love their texture. You, you think of flowers as being such soft petals, and you touch this, and it's so... It's, the texture is hard to describe. It really is. It's almost like hard candy. I don't know. I don't know, but, but it also has a little bit of a give to it too. Anyway, they're just so fantastic. I love the ball varieties. And I think that this is going to go fantastic with the burgundy ones that I've ordered. Next up, Joey Morella. Now, Joey Morella is new to me. I've never grown this one. And it's more of a dark purple. You know, I have the dark burgundies. This is more of a dark purple variety. And I'm excited about this one because it reminds me of Diva, which is one of my favorites. I grew that last year. I only had one bloom, just one. And it was fantastic though. <laughs> I really love Diva. It's, it's not one of those purples that are um, hard to photograph. And uh, I just really like the texture and the, the color of it. Really beautiful. I have some Diva tubers downstairs. Hopefully they make it. And the last one on my list here for Leo is called Extase. I'm not even joking you. I had tears in my eyes when I was trying to go online and find a picture of this one to show you guys. Legit, crying because this is so gorgeous. Look at her, she demands attention. I can't even stand it. Okay, speaking of demanding attention, check out what's next on my list. Now this is from uh, dutchbulbs.com, these next couple on my list. I think the last one's on my list. I have three left for you. And I am not gonna lie, it's a classic cafe au lait. I had to, I needed her in my life. She makes me happy. I've never grown her before, but my flower friend Gina grew her and I would go and I would see Gina's and Gina would bring me some and I would put my face in the cafe's face and I would not want to remove it. I just needed it, even if it's just for me to put my face in it. It's fantastic, I got five tubers of cafe. They had a pretty good price. You know, it's not like a super low wholesale $2 a tuber price, but it was pretty realistic for a cafe since I've seen cafes go for $15, $16 a tuber. This is a clump coming from, I think I got five or whatever clumps for whatever price, I don't know. It was pretty cheap. You can go on their dutchbulbs.com and check it out. Lily Hammer. Yes, Lily Hammer is also new to me. She's soft, she's delicate, but she packs a punch. I just love this one. In some photos, she has a peach undertone, but in other photos, she has a yellow undertone. Either way, she's coming home with me. And my last, okay, my last as of today, brace yourself. Her name is Michaela Miranda. This is every sunshine, rainbow, sprinkles, unicorn dream I've ever had rolled into one. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. It just makes me think all the happy thoughts. <laughs> Look at it. It's, it's so beautiful. <gasps> and that's it. I'm done. I'm trying to calm down. Okay, so that's it. That's my list of dahlias or dahlias for the 2021 season. Although I have to tell you, I am terrified that Erin from Florette's book, Discovering Dahlias, is coming out in March because then I know I'm going to want to get more. <laughs> and really, guys, they're out of stock. Like, people are like buying up all the dahlias all over the place. So I'm terrified when her book comes out that I'm gonna want like 10 more varieties. Seriously. My eyes can't stop. Okay, so as of right now, I'm putting 145 tubers in the ground for 2021, and the rest is going to be grown from seed. And I know this question's coming, so I'm gonna answer it now. Am I going to start them early? What am I gonna do? When am I gonna plant them? Okay, so I think I decided I'm gonna plant maybe, I'm gonna pot up some seeds, maybe a few dozen seeds I'll start early in my basement. I started 30 tubers early last year in my basement, and it just, didn't really make a difference for me. So I'm not gonna waste all that space in my basement for starting dahlias early, um, just to have them like 10 days or so earlier. But who knows, this is how I'm doing it. I'm planting the tubers directly into the ground once the soil temperature reaches about 50 degrees, and I will start some dahlias from seed 
inside to get a jump start on the season. A lot of people do cuttings and stuff like that. I, I've got so much other stuff going on that I'm not gonna be doing any of that. So that's what I'm doing, straight into the ground tubers, probably late May that is for me. I know that's late, but that's the reality of zone 4B. So that's what I'm doing it. So onward and upward, I am not giving up on dahlias for 2021. See you soon.